Hello everyone, Ace here, and I'm just happy to be back again to do another video. This will be the first time in front of the camera for quite a while. What I decided to do was just to pop in because I've had something in my mind for some time, and I decided let me just discuss it. I actually noticed a few interesting changes in the smartphone and the tech world recently. There have been a lot of new things that came out, and some of them actually made me think really and truly about where, where we actually will be going in the smartphone world and in the tech world as a whole. We have the new mirrorless cameras from Canon and Sony and we have the release of some new gaming laptops such as the Acer Predator Helios 300 2020 version. However, I'm here to read and truly speak to you about the changes in the smartphone world. There have been a spate of changes in the smartphone world recently a lot of new additions and some of these additions are actually very interesting and some of you need to really take note of. In the first few weeks, let's say, or two months or so, we've had the release of the OnePlus Nord, the Google Pixel 4a, the, and more recently, the release of the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 and Note 20 Ultra, right? But of course, before then, there was the release of the iPhone SE, which was a major addition, and many ways people might have said an unexpected addition from a brand such as iPhone, which never dealt with the mid-range or budget marketing anyway. <laughs> All right, so this was a major change. The recent videos actually made me think deeply about what is going on in the smartphone world, which is why I decided to do this video to basically outline uh, or share my thoughts on what is going on really and truly. Overall, what I can say is that these releases have raised two things for me. I have a concern and I'm also very excited about where things are going in relation to the smartphone world and more importantly in relation to the mid-range smartphone world. So where does my concern come in? It comes in when we start to deal with the higher cost of phones. Over the years, the cost of smartphones have, been, have gone higher. Uh, many would say it probably started with iPhone 10 when it reached the $1,000 mark and maybe in the years before then the price kept going up and going up and then it just reached the $1,000 mark and then phones have consistently been reaching that $1,000 mark. Of course, in other countries like Guyana, where you have to have shipping costs included, it's well more than a thousand US if you only actually get it. So that's something to take into account when you want to get one of these phones. This year, however, I would say they probably took it to another level because we have the, or rather Samsung took it to another level when they released the S20 and S20 Ultra. The S20 being the basic flagship for 999 and then they released the S20 Ultra for 1400 US. It's a lot, and maybe it was released at a bad time because it was released just before the pandemic, and of course the pandemic came, and I'm not sure how that's affecting the sales, but I don't think it's doing that well. So, later on, they, they released the, what is the premier flagship version of the phone, which is the Note and the Note 20 Ultra. Now, the Note 20 Ultra is, in many ways, a premier phone that is suitable and matches the name of a Note. The Note 20, however, has, has people a bit puzzled because there are a lot of things that they're actually taking out of the Note, which makes it less valuable or less value worthy in comparison to phones who are generally not even compete with the Note, including the S20. Because in many ways, you might see the S20 and S20 Ultra would be a better buy than the Note. I will say this though. I don't believe that any phone is a value purchase if you actually sell it above a thousand US and you also remove the headphone jack or you don't have a headphone jack. I can't it I don't I can't re reconcile it really and truly. That's the honest response to something like that. Think about this. Cameras are usually considered more valuable are more noteworthy when they have a headphone jack or a microphone input because you actually have a direct input to put in the audio. Now that is important. The reason why that is important 
is because it allows you to have audio in because we all know line audio tends to be better or have a better quality than Bluetooth audio which is what you have to rely on unless you get a dongle and use it on your smartphone so for me I, I can't reconcile the two I understand financially it's better for them because they can sell the various buds and whatever else but at the end of the day it does not it makes the utility less useful and for all those who want to say oh let's get, get a dongle do you go with that uh, let's ask yourself this question can you charge whilst you're using that dongle no you can't charge and record you can't charge and listen at the same time so just ask yourself the question and, and, and think about it so getting back to the Note 20 Ultra and the Note 20 one of the things I have to think about and consider really and truly when I look at these things is is it worth getting a flagship in 2020 one of these premier flagship in 2020 and this actually brings to four the exciting trend that actually makes me happy really and truly the exciting trend in what I'm looking at or what I'm speaking about really and truly is the, is the recognition by the main brands or more main brands that the mid-range market is also important and that you should release quality things to the mid-range market now the iPhone SE has the benefit of having the high-end uh, processor uh, it has the benefit of having the cameras and some of the camera features the Google Pixel 4a is just going along with what it, it would have or rather continue what it did and with the Google Pixel 3a which is the recognition that uh, having a phone with decent specs and a wonderful camera can be all that people would need at that level. And of course the OnePlus Nord which decided to focus on speed and the cameras is not as good but they're serviceable. All right, And they're to do what you need to do more or less. More or less. So you have these phones at this price range which makes it better and makes it more affordable for, or rather allows persons to have more options and that is what I'm excited about of course I'll, you always have to give a shout out to other companies such as Samsung, LG, Huawei, Yaomi and all the other com companies that have been making phones that are ca cater rather to that kind of market I get to the low end market but they're high quality phones at that, at that lower level price. For example, the Samsung Galaxy A51, right? That is one, one thing that I actually noted is really good. And I said I would have done reviews on some of the Yami phones, I would have done reviews on some of the LG phones that you can even get right now at a low cost. And of course, they, for each brand, there is a Q version. And that is something you also could take into account and get that if you want to get a low a budget LG device that is fast all right so this is just my quick video to actually just touch on these areas and touch on these things and to let you know some things that you could consider in the future when you're going to go out and buy phones so when next you decide that you want to go and buy a phone you could also you could of course check out the flagships but i would recommend you also take a, just a few minutes or whatever to just check out those mid-rangers they all come at a good price they are below 400 although I would recommend for the iPhone SE to get the version that is 128 gigabytes because you can expand the storage and um, once you can expand the storage it goes, goes rather quickly that means after rely on cloud you got to spend more money later on so spend the money now and get the version that has the 128 gigabyte storage I believe that is 450 or thereabouts and I think that'll be worth it overall. My only gripe with both the OnePlus Nord and the iPhone SE is that you make it a mid-range phone and you don't have headphone jack. I don't know how that works because generally persons who want to get, for persons who are that budget conscious would prefer to get a wired earphones. Or even if they get a Bluetooth, it won't be the expensive 150, 120, whatever um, price Bluetooth earphones that are being produced. My recommendation for the future for these companies: you have high-end phones, 
have the high end Bluetooth um, earphones. You have low end phones and budget phones have budget Bluetooth earphones. That is the only thing I can also recommend in relation to that. Well, you know the, tr the drill. Like, subscribe, comment. And this is Asa, and I'll see you again in another video.